the agenda is to confirm the minutes of the previous meeting. Now, as you will be aware, um, I don't know the only two, but the only three people that can agree is, is Simon, Wendy, or John, because none of us were there. I'm so, 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 yeah. John Techman there. Sorry about that, Simon. Did you miss him? I know, I know. Not at all. I know we have an IT technician in. We've got an extra one in John. Okay, so um, we move on to declarations of interest. Does any members have any declarations of interest? No, no, okay, no. Uh, public question time. Have you received any public questions? No, okay. Oh, we seem to have this agenda. Okay. So, uh, reports of the local outbreak mitigation board, which is item 4A, which is the update on the current situation. Is that Simon? Simon, over to you. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. And with permission, I'll just share a slide there with that. You've got it on your back. Uh, I'll, I'll talk through it as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank So I was getting there. Okay, okay. I hope that's visible to you, visible to you all. Um, so um, this presentation gives an update on the uh, current situation, and I'll talk through that fairly quickly. But happy to take questions as we go through. So really, across the country, we've seen a kind of variable rate of fluctuation rates of um, COVID. Slightly frustratingly, the, the maps are done um, 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 in different different, different scales. scales see, but what we are seeing is those rates going up and down, down parts of the country uh, going uh, forward. Just to put context to the island white. And then what we've seen here, and this is um, as of the 13th, and as I said, I'll talk through, but we've got some really much more updated information because this was done on Monday. So what we've seen is uh, since last week a slight decrease in our age rate to 229.4. So that's our seven day rate of new cases. And then that's slightly lower than the uh, national rate of 380.3. Our over 60s rate is 106.8. And again, that's slightly lower than the national average at 161.9. So all in all, what we're seeing is our rates are coming down, but they're still fairly, fairly high, and we're seeing that um, our uh, positivity, which shows whether the pandemic is spreading or not, is 8.5. So it's above five. We know it is spreading, and we're doing work around it. When we look at our, our PCR testing. So that's testing for people who've got symptoms. We can, see, we can see in line with the number of increased cases, we've got increased testing as you expect. So that's good. That shows people are taking up tests as appropriate, and that's really positive. And then our lateral flows, again, um, be fairly steady. With the schools going back, we've seen that increase as expected because when people go back to school, they can be testing more. So again, that's very positive. And then when we look at infections through the island, so you can see across the pandemic where we are, we can see that peak in January. And sadly, we have 10,000 people with COVID on the island. And in the last seven days, we did 471. So, still a significant illness, but we know the impact of serious illness is being really um, prevented by the vaccination program. And that's really, really good news. But still, we want to ensure that we protect people from the effects of COVID where we are. 
And then when we look at age rates, we know that the younger population has been talking about previously, and that will be for a number of factors. One is that they haven't had access to the vaccination program, and also the vaccination bit. Uh, two, uh, two, those are the population that, due to the nature of their work, aren't able to work at home as much. And um, um, then the social activities that the population can take to be more in higher groups. So, so uh, that, uh, that's what that is there. Moving on to vaccination, we've done very well with our vaccination rates uh, across the whole island, with 80% of our population totally vaccinated. And another, uh, and then uh, top that's 85 percent have had an adverse dose, so that's really good news. And what we've seen announced the last night in the winter plan was the booster program, the, do the third dose of those who are right, and then the school group, and we've got 15. So, those new programs that have uh, uh, information coming through, through from government on a, on a daily basis, they are working very closely to ensure those roll out, meeting inequalities, and, uh, and then hospitalisation. Sadly, we do know, even though the vaccination is really good at breaking the pain, and you can see that with the difference between January and now, we are still seeing some hospitalisation of people. In the, in the main, those who are serious people are those who are not vaccinated. And so uh, I really encourage people to support to promote the vaccination program. And, you know, thank everyone for taking that opportunity up. And if someone has, for whatever reason, not taken the vaccination up, please do contact your GP or your go to the vaccination centre and get up information. And that's deliberate. I just point out that little flip. Um, there was a data error. Um, um, not to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. And then sadly, and sadly we know no, that some people, people sadly died from COVID. COVID. This number is still small, but as we uh, see more see cases, more cases we are going to see sadly more mortality. mortality. Um, um, again, again, the vaccination, the vaccination program, program is really, really, really preventing really um, uh, mortality, mortality in most people. That's really good news. Mm -hmm. um, 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 Chair, I'll, I'll stop I'll there. Stop there. Presentation, but it's probably worth highlighting to colleagues that the winter plan came out yesterday. Um, and there's a number of things that others might consider. So we've got plan A and plan B is when we see an increase in cases at a national level. They're still talking about the vaccination, testing, and isolation. So we're working through that. We came out on Monday, working through our COVID plan to make sure they are ready for winter and how the plans go forward with the COVID outbreak. Chair, I'll stop there. I am getting quite a lot of feedback from the producer. Yeah, please, Simon. It's a bit difficult to hear past the said. Are there any questions, please, for Simon? As much as I think that we would have expected, um, Simon, I'll put you on the spot with the um, figure we are in September. Uh, projections on what we have so far. See uh, an increase, it would be a massive increase. Gradual increase on where we are This is just something for projection. Yes, thank you, Councillor Stevenson. So, so, I think I brought the question about increases. We are going to see an increase in cases as we have with the school society opening up more. As I said, the vaccination program has really broken that chain between cases and hospitalisation. But the more cases are, we will get more hospitalisation because that's what happens happen to a much lower extent. It's likely to be during the next few months as we see that. And then also we know that the NHS, social care, and the winter pressure from the flu and other illnesses is really key to um, kind of work into that. Package. It's not just COVID, there's the winter pressure, there's many other things, winter illnesses we need to think about. I'll come back. 
say that um, you know the NHS and indeed uh, social care of uh, uh, um What type of preparation is there? I mean, I'm looking at hospitalisation. Uh, um, we've got we've got the number of beds to uh, deal with uh, hospital projection on where we are today, and the care. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank so, you. so from, from, from the hospital from the perspective, they're doing, doing a lot of work as they do every winter to prepare for winter pressures. pressures. From our perspective, our we are promoting the flu vaccination programme, we're promoting the COVID vaccination programme, but also really promoting those messages um, of, of ventilation, ventilation, wearing masks uh, in uh, closed spaces, spaces. Uh, and getting uh, testing, testing. So we're doing all of that to play our part in the winter preparation. Have we got a marketing campaign to express on uh, going back to distancing and uh, face masks, etc. Because uh, we need to raise the game on that. Yes, I'm yeah, sure. sure. Wendy can when give you give further up to our comms and doing an awful lot of work on those things. things. And just and listen to the Chief Medical Officer, there's some, there's some campaigns, campaigns about vaccination about young, young people. people. Which would be media channels we may not perhaps see. Yeah, uh, Wendy can come in and she sent me um, a copy of press releases and go to town and parish she's been yesterday. Um, and I've also said that we used to go for staff members as well. And then we get to share our life. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Simon, for all the work that you've been doing and all the team and all you've been working Incredibly, incredibly hard, especially all the volunteers on there have been there in the centre. Um, and I feel really confident in the strong message that has been put out from both public health and through our own media comments here to be pushing that by heart. Um, in fact, I think it's quite surprising that the numbers aren't actually higher in terms of um, uh, infection because um, we've had a long summer and the island has been. Incredibly busy, and so therefore, uh, it just uh, should be appeared to the other people and the people that have been visiting. So, I've been encouraged by that. Um, so, so, some strong messages coming out. So, I'm being confirmed that, we, that our people have been working on the other side of the uh, water around the whole, false areas and uh, giving out messages to the visitors. Yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah, Councillor. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. right. As right. society has opened up, we've seen more see cases, more as we were expecting. expecting. And I, um, um, I'm working very closely with my colleagues in the cities, cities particularly city around, around the very poor, to encourage uh, the right uh, behaviour, encouraging testing, 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 and making sure testing is available, particularly at busy times. So we've done a lot of work around that. And making, and making sure, sure I'm really I'm pleased that our pharmacy, pharmacy offers for lateral, lateral flow, flow is working, working well. well. Pharmacies are accessible, accessible in all our communities, communities and we've and made sure they've got plenty of supply and good and opening good hours, hours for that. For so, that. yeah, so working yeah, really, hard. really hard. I work very closely with my city colleagues um, because, um, because, as, as you're rightly saying, people don't stay still and we want to work across the patch to give consistent messages. And I think, think um, uh, Councillor, one of the challenges we have is as winter approaches, meeting outside is less appealing to people. So how do we kind of keep those good, good practices up that we've had for so long, which has helped keep our rates as they are? I'm very confident messages that we need to We particularly need to keep the processes Every death is a tragedy. I mean, every death is a tragedy. And the winter approach is important to stay positive.
a little finite resource and we come to the impossible, you know, and support as the development of the So with regard to the consent issue, uh, as many are aware, the Gillick competencies, which says a young person can consent for medical procedures, ideally in consultation with their parents, but they don't have to, they're deemed to be competent. So that's, I guess, where that is being from. We were meeting last night to kind of unpick some of the details of how this might work. We were planning, as you can understand, from seminars and webinars for schools and parents. Those are all being developed you know, very late last night we discussing how we can do this. Uh, you're right, the second dose isn't clear. We're waiting for national guidance on that. At the minute, we are just being asked to our first dose, which they will then monitor. Um, and then we'll look at the second dose later on, but I, mean, I don't have any further information on that. But please be assured, I have a fortnight meeting uh, with the Department of Health and Colleagues who raised those very clearly 
through the through relevant the groups, and I will take, take that back, back before I get some answers. Yeah. Sorry, Simon. And I should also be aware it's it's not been recommended that it's the Pfizer vaccine that is given to this, this cohort, can we be reassured that there will be sufficient supplies on the island for that programme to be delivered? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The supply is only is basically done on the population we need. So, um, for example, so Manchester would get far more on the island, and it's done evenly across the country. So if there is any likelihood, I, I don't know that there is there any, but they'll roll out evenly. So, um, and we'll get the right supply for the island via those, the, you know, as a complex vaccine to deliver, we'll make, we'll make, we'll be made sure the island gets in full of dose. Thank you, Simon. Uh, uh, I find I was very involved with the university many years ago, um, and of course, that's all the So, the point is that the real message is that we really want the people to do this in partnership with their parents and uh, take the decision. Of course, the older that people are, and the more independent that they are. So, so, the point is about working together and so that the whole decision. Um, I'm going to make a couple of points in the meeting and also throw a questions to you, Simon. I'm sorry about the Perhaps a question first, Simon. I think part of the role of the World Club Education for all these two is to help get strong digital community about the holding resources in the I suppose looking at the numbers posted, the lateral protest that we've been taking, Simon, I'm really not probably disappointed by what I think looks like and relatively low numbers of lateral protests that we set against the vote of time and PCR tests that have been taken. We, we need to do more, or should we say more about uh, encouraging people to take and record those lateral protests because it does give us that picture on activity on the island. But I think using lateral protests is one of the ways we can make sure they protect themselves and protect their families. Yeah, yes, yes uh, uh, Chief Secretary, I yeah, absolutely yeah, agree. agree. We do we need do to promote need testing to as a continuing habit, habit that we need to get into, into and do that and on a twice weekly basis, basis because that would be really important really for, for, for our, our helping uh, print spread. Because we know uh, a certain, certain percentage percent of the population will have COVID asymptomatically and still be able to spread it. And we're also picking up a very, very strong public message. a new test out where you only have to do no sports and it only takes 15 minutes. So I think there could be very some very useful messaging. Certainly I really I did do the test but I really did not like doing the program and since it's been announced it's been so much better. So I think perhaps some messaging about these new tests might just encourage more people to very happy to support that. Um, and I also think we um, can possibly take away from the lessons as a council of other schools and all the encouragement and success before the big events. Uh, in the council, we're encouraging all the success before the big events and those sort of children and the lessons that we can take from the council. I do want to make a couple of points. Yeah. Um, the one of the, this um, particular board came out of a couple of which was developed by the yeah, I'm very interested to get you know, the match framework is dictated at the centre. Um, I think the direction of that framework is, is less about 
hanging out with this person. Yeah, the girl here that is four walls and how to access various locations that you need to take a walk to the city offices, it's about being able to spread the culture on the community. So uh, the a lot of things in the supermarket gardens, a framework of students and people taking uh and that should be pretty much what we can also do. Uh, and I think the final point I want to make is people really to re emphasize what society was saying. Uh, and there is yet to be a difference. I think it's really, really important that we get to the last issue. We're saying that we can open the last issue. We all take the last issue, we can pressure to get the last issue. That is another way to pressure all of Again, um, and I think the final message Messaging when he wasn't there, that was put out towards the beginning. I've actually got it printed off with, with my postcode on as to exactly what the procedure is if you are a visitor to the island and you find out or you suspect that you have COVID. And that, that information hasn't changed. And I believe that's still available, isn't it, under the, the packs on Heat the Island State. The other point, John, that you alluded to. Yes, I absolutely agree that we need to protect our NHS and protect our hospitals. We've only got one hospital and we really do need to have that as a last point. It's almost like we're going back to the original messaging, not necessarily stay at home, but it's still protecting NHS and safe lives, isn't it? So it's almost that we're, we're going back to that, that messaging about protecting communities with approach. Should I come back in here? Would that be helpful? Yeah, and yeah. Councillor Andre, I absolutely agree. And I think, sorry, sorry Councillor Love, I missed a bit of your comment. 
but I agree it's how we continue to promote the really good behaviours during the winter around the kind of hand face face testing and not being vaccinated get vaccinated but you're right we've done an awful lot of that, that work and, and Councillor Andre I think you mentioned previously the work we've done with schools has been phenomenally good and you know I thank all the schools Colleges, head teachers, pupils for doing what they do because actually it's made a difference. And um, you know, we need to continue that with all our businesses, and everyone's done a great job. And because of that, that's why we've seen where why we're in a, you know, in a relatively good position. Simon, uh, can you just reassure us all that obviously the island of transportation is really busy? Can I just confirm that about, about the medical, medical people travelling for medical needs? Is that what you're asking? Yes, Simon. Just want to make sure we have those discussions with the government to prioritise island people for medical conditions where possible and very easily. So we are assured when we come Sunday, Monday, Tuesday next week, we get to the same. So, so with, with regard to the need for people to travel for medical appointments really works with the NHS. We've worked very closely with the ferry companies to ensure that from a COVID perspective they do all they can and we'll continue those conversations with the ferry companies to ensure that people who need them for medical reasons can access that. Yeah, I would just really the NHS Okay, so um, I think that's um, item A and B, um, and I and, uh, that we received the update. So really, it's just the update on communications, Wendy, which I know you've been working on. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so members of the board uh, will have seen the COVID that we have been working with a very strong message that it's about to stay safe by the way. And that's targeted at our local communities and our residents, but it's very much targeted at this community as well. It's equally important. And that has been about encouraging people to join us safely, focusing on key behaviours, on testing regularly, um, using a PCR if you uh, have symptoms, isolating, Very much in partnership with Visit Our Life. 
libraries uh, and we've also worked in partnership with the Chamber. So we have been sharing all of our messages with our partners and organisations every time something has come out. More recently, over the summer, we've had a small number of travel ambassadors that have been working on more ferries that may have ports that are going to the travel to the old five or the safe world. And uh, we've updated all of our curriculums in session on our on Visit by the Y site and on Keep the Island Safe for all site is And for me, that's the one thing that you can have on the website and have the favorites that are on the Continual updates to our tourism sector and hospitality industry is a one requirement. Um, we've updated our COVID business advice pages on our website for the last five months to be released, and our regulatory services our COVID support offices. We work very closely with the schools throughout the pandemic, but more importantly, since the COVID has offered to anywhere that's now getting back to the COVID environment. That's been really successful, and I have to say, one of the really positive. Probably the other one in general, the other one very, very good at taking the safety decisions. Uh, we've done targeted work with our environment um, CSOs, uh, and in particular, we've targeted some work linked to events that are happening. So, we are suited for event and ride, uh, our environment health officers, and going to sport officers, and some targeted work. Equally, this week we have been talking about the import area to support the business. I guess that brings me to festival, and we have had a campaign around the environment and the city safety. A lot of that has linked directly to the work that we are continuing to give out messages post festival in partnership with. To uh, encourage those people who attended to keep the same as being as part of the community. We've had a long going focus on test testing late messages again, ready for the out of the channels. We've done some focus work on self isolation to make sure people can really understand uh, not only when they should self isolate, but support was available to them. Uh, information shared with vaccination centres and the police and water centres to make sure that everyone who's attending there has the opportunity to see that information. And that included changes to self isolation requirements that we have since August. We have the ongoing support that we do with our CCG and health partners on the World Out Vaccination Programme, and that will change and be part of the future. And I guess that brings us to kind of the new age we live And there's been a lot of discussion in Wall Street this morning about um, the to spread, about how we can use like, the protests to understand the risks to ourselves, to our immediate families, to our friends that we want to visit, and use that as a way of screening ourselves and being able to escape that risk. Um, there are a lot of people who will be asymptomatic in natural protests. Way that we can help manage the spread of the There's a lot about personal responsibility at the end. The economy, businesses, uh, hospitality sector, and the sector is open now. We have some responsibility as individuals to make sure that we can help ourselves. So our message is we'll continue to um, test. Take part in dressing when we test positive, isolate when we positive. We will be developing a COVID safety campaign to see this through water filter that will link with the new campaign that will be more advice and that will focus on schools and businesses in general. We will continue to support the vaccination program. Well done, Wendy. I have to say, I mean, I don't know that we could hear any more. 
I, I think it's probably incredible the amount of information and stuff that we're getting out there. Um, and it is people's personal responsibility in all of this. Um, I don't know whether you say Christmas is cancelled, if you don't, you know, if you don't continue with these things, that might have made when people uh, sit up and listen. Um, you know, because actually it is these good behaviours and it's, you know, people who have been vaccinated. Um, David, did you want to come in from? Yes, Wendy, I, I, I have to say I've used the information so much that has been put out and it's so comprehensive and I think you have just about got every scenario covered. I probably should have brought this up slightly earlier, but I did have um, a residue contact with me that was having trouble. They, they had the Pfizer vaccination, the first one. They needed to have the second one. They went on, sorry, Simon, it's probably more question to you. They went on to the NHS website, and it was a little bit like some testing earlier on. They were being given pull and haven't or something. Anyway, I emailed them back with the link, and then they came straight back to me to say they got onto the link and they've got their second one booked. But I just wondered if perhaps there's a little bit of a glitch in the system still, because I know certainly with the PCR testing that first came out, it was time specific, wasn't it? And if you went on at a certain time and the slots had just been released, you would, were much more likely to be off to test on the island. Whereas if you went on just before they were released, it's sort of eight o'clock in the morning and eight o'clock in the evening. Is, is there sort of still some kind of little glitch in the, um, in the booking of the vaccinations, if you're aware of yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you. I'm, I'm not aware of a glitch, but I do know that using the national booking system, system, it knows what was your first vaccine and what your second dose is. is. And at and times, time, you know, the Riverside switched switch from one to the, the other, other, so then you may have to go to your GP. My recommendation is if you, someone struggling, they should go to their GP practice who can make that kind of direct. Kind of that and direct appointment, but, but I think that's probably that the glitch you're mentioning. mentioning. I'm hoping that is resolved, but it, it's, it's mainly about when the Riverside switched over. Uh, that there are still uh, still women available to support people who are kind of difficult to that service and um, uh, who are maybe having to take time off to get people, etc. That help is still there and that will continue through the winter. We almost, we're not going to make any changes that will be able to support that. Thank you, Chair. Went down, possibly done a fantastic job for me and the team. But I am putting it off. Can you tell me, um, you mentioned the chamber. Also, the town of Harris. And we have the sums in the town of Harris. But to just ask about um, vaccination passports. Now, this is, this is something that's near and dear to my heart. I've lost my passport, so I'm not going anyway. In fact, I haven't got the time. But um, what is the latest position on vaccination passports? And um, if there is an avenue that we can get vaccination passports, is it? So, yeah, thank, yeah, thank, thank you, Councillor Stephen. Thank you. So, um, um, from reading the winter plan, the vaccine passport scheme is not now in place. Obviously, we want to encourage people to take up the vaccine. 
and think about <laughs> when we work with the vendors, how we can make them safe, which is what we've done uh, most recently. But the vaccine system has, uh, as far as uh, the reason we've done that, and that's not something that's going to do. I just added that it's really important that we have the right people in to social media and their NHS app. So it's really important to use this and So there are ways of proving people who wish to visit their online records and their email addresses. I think what I have to do your question about this is that there has been some talks about the internet and the government and Still, a possibility that uh, uh, might be able to make these books for the files, records, etc. Should be should be able to 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 also able to be 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 so, so I think those things are This is hypothetical. And I up this. I, I go with projections earlier, and I'm going to find the test from the other side. If we go for um, this NHS app to give you your uh, proof of two jabs, etc., and then we move on to, and I'm, I'm not going to just go to scratch this any more than I am looking for my own. What do you foresee as being the mechanism for delivering your vaccination in the last month? Would it be through the public health? Um, or would it be through the NHS? And would it be done on a national rollout? Or would we be able to set something up and move more swiftly than it would be national? Uh, so this would be on a national, national, level, national level, level run by the Department of Health and, um, and the NHS. Right, thank you. Just because it's just that's what the passports are all the 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 Going back on that, the general church, one last uh, challenge over the limits of what I'm saying. Um, so, therefore, we do actually island residents, the NHS Act, and to these various applications that we can uh, utilize for obtaining uh, a passport that needs to be rather than some, some people in signpost. I mean, it's fine, but I wouldn't tell me how I can get um, a passport or something. I need to go to Cyprus or something. And, uh, do we do that? Okay. I mean, it might well be a national um, push to do that. No, but these are our residents. Should we do that? Perhaps. 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 The airlines have all been really, really very, very um, tight for providing that information. So, the Council of Love, um, I pointed point to ask when, because um, some people have booked with airlines, they travel across 
ferries and uh, other, other means of transport, and uh, therefore they're not they're not they're not in contact with uh, airlines. I'm asking whether we have got a, an opportunity here to actually signpost local island residents uh, through to whether whether it be with an NHS. Sorry, Chair. Um, Council Stevens, uh, you remember I said uh, we have kitthealandsafe.org. Thank you for saying what is here. Keep the island safe. Um, open and available to all of our residents and we can't tell us if you're in the As part of that, there's a page of, of that website. Uh, it's called Stay Safe Isle of Wight. And the page is called Stay Safe Isle of Wight. And the uh, guidance under there specifically signposts people to using the NHS cast by the NHS uh, app and also continuing to use the NHS. Okay, so um, I think that's about it because we've done the communications and we've received an update. Are there any members' questions that we haven't already answered? Asked, answered, no. Not hear anything? No. Okay. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Simon. Get back to your busy update with everything else going on. Apologies for not being there. Just because I'm not sure